Heather Slusser here for the University of Wisconsin Extension. During this series, we will highlight various fact sheets and resources that have been developed for you. Today, we are joined with Dr. Atkins, who's going to talk about his fact sheet that he co-authored on feeding unpasteurized milk to the dairy herd. Some producers have thought of, can we feed this to our to our livestock on the farm? Um, so we, we've come up with some considerations and probably the, the biggest one that we can think of is potential disease risk of, of tr disease transfer to other animals in the herd, uh, especially like Yoni's disease, uh, mycoplasma, uh, BLV, uh, Staph aureus, if there's any carriers. so. That's one major consideration that producers need to think about and definitely need to work with the veterinarian to see what the potential risk is of transfer from the in the milk to the rest of the herd, especially the younger animals, the calves, the, the young heifers. You don't want those animals to be set up for any detrimental issues later on when they start producing. And then the other consideration is how we're going to handle the milk. A lot of farms don't really have the pumps or tanks or hoses to really deal with that. So that's something they got to plan out and how they're going to add it to the ration. Other considerations is spoilage issues. Whenever you start adding moisture and potential nutrients to the ration, especially at the TMR, you're putting it at risk of spoiling and heating and uh, some off odors from that milk in the, in the ration. So it might cause some feeding take problems. And flies, flies are a can be a, a potential big problem that you need to consider. And you just gotta keep the, the feed bunk clean, keep the mixer clean, make sure you're possibly rinsing that out on a daily basis to get rid of the residue, potentially uh, making sure you're cleaning out that feed bunk on a regular basis to remove that milk residue if it does appear. And also you could use a, a feed through an insect regulator to help control the fly populations in the feed as well. And that'll help to control uh, flies before they start to to become a problem. So those are probably the, the main considerations before you would consider uh, feeding that. So really need to work with a veterinarian first, I think, to consider what is it possible with your disease risk on your farm. The first and obvious choice would probably be the, the calves. They're already being fed milk. Especially if you have a, a pasteurizer, a batch pasteurizer, that you can possibly increase your capacity with, with using that to pasteurize more milk for those calves. That would be the first place I would look at. You could feed up to about 12 quarts of milk per day. If you're feeding a lower rate now, you'd probably wanna slowly ramp those up over a week or two. And you can really extend out how long you feed them, them milk too. You can extend that weaning time up to 12 weeks of age. Uh, most farms are probably six to eight weeks right now, so you can really use a, a quite a bit of milk by extending out that weaning time by up to six weeks. The thing with that is, do you want to make sure that you give a, a couple weeks of, of time at the prior to weaning to really get them started on grain, especially if you're feeding up more milk, starter intake generally is going to be delayed because of those higher milk intakes. So you got to let that animal get used to eating that starter grain for a longer period of time likely at least two weeks uh, adjustment time. And then in the, the other option is in the, in the total mix ration or TMR, you can add the milk to that. Uh, likely guidelines that we've come up with are about 10 to 15% of the TMR, and that'll increase the moisture content about 5%, which would be fairly similar to adding water to the ration to wet it to prevent sorting. Um, so we're thinking that might be an option. Uh, it'll contribute about two pounds of solids, dry matter, of, of protein and fat and uh, sugars. So you gotta work with a nutritionist to balance that out. When you're adding it to the, the ration, you gotta really consider how wet it is already. If it's already a fairly wet ration, you probably aren't gonna be able to add as much of that milk because it might start seeping out of it, causing more problems. If it's a drier ration, you probably can add a bit more. So it really depends on the diets on your farm. Um, and there, again, you got to really track that that ration to make sure it's not heating and having off smells, which can really cause problems with intake. Um, and I probably would not use milk and rations for dry cows or transition cows because if you do have off odors or 
smells in those rations your feed intake is going to be lower and you're going to cause some problems with possibly ketosis and lower feed intakes around calving so probably want to avoid those diets for adding milk i, I would just encourage uh, producers to really work with their uh, consultants they're in the veterinarians the nutritionists work with them to uh, evaluate whether it's a good option and um, and just use use those resources that you have work with the extension uh, and those consultants to really figure out if this can be a, a viable option on your farm so it really depends on each farm situation